Hi friends! We're gonna do another reading wrap up today. Today we're gonna go over all the books on my classics shelf. First I'm going to show you what the bookshelf looks like and then I'm gonna show you all of the books that are actually on it and talk about them for just a second or two. The most important book on my bookshelf is this copy of The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. It means a lot to me because I have had several people that I have loved and cared about sign the inside of this book. None of those people have been Margaret Atwood yet, but I'm coming for you. Um, a lot of these people are people that I've worked with to build a better world. Next we have Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Um, this is a really lovely edition of the book. It has this nice beautiful uh, inside cover that's sort of peacock feathers and a swirl. And of course the opening quote is on the back. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man with a good fortune must be in want of a wife. From that same series I also have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Um, it has, you know, the same beautiful intricate details. Um, this, again, the feather, peacock feathering kind of effect to it on the inside. And on the back uh, there is the quote, It is in vain to say human beings ought to be satisfied with tranquility. They must have action and they will make it if they cannot find it. Um, and yeah, it is another beautiful, beautiful edition of this wonderful classic book. I'm actually hoping to get more um, classic books in this edition. Um, in this uh, style from Barnes & Noble. Um, next we have A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Le Ingle. Um, I don't have a dust jacket for this one. My family has owned this particular copy of this particular book longer than I've been alive, but I am the one who loved it the most, so I took it. Next we have The Queen's Head by Edward Marston, um, which is, I guess, a mystery story or a play. To be perfectly honest, I bought this for a class, and I don't remember what class it was. I'm not 100% sure that I did the reading. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum, which I thought was a pretty fun story. I really liked it when I read it. Um, and this is a really nice edition of this book as well. It has quite a few fun full page illustrations for readers to enjoy. And then we have Stuart Little by E.B. White, which is a book that I've actually never read. Um, this also has some fun illustrations, and I've been mean to read it, mean to get around to it, uh, but I just never have. I picked it up at a used book sale a couple years ago, and I would really like to get to it this upcoming year. Next we have a group of books from the Wordsworth Classics editions. So there is Anne of Green Gables and Anne of Avonlea by Ellen Montgomery. Ellen Montgomery is one of my favorite authors. If you've been around for a while, you know that I spent all of 2019 reading the entire Anne of Green Gables series and 2020 reading the Emily Starr series, both by L.M. Montgomery, and I thought, you know, it's just delightful. Loved the stories. The Jungle Book and the second Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling, um, which once again just has a fantastic cover to it. I love this lovely, like, Wordsworth Classics edition. Um, and it is another book that I am looking forward to reading. Robin Hood by Henry Gilbert same deal. Pinocchio by Carlo Collodi. Carlo Collodi. Also have never read it, but I'm looking forward to it. A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. This is actually a delightful children's story and definitely something I read three or four times when I was growing up. It's just about a little girl uh, who was very wealthy and is sent away to a boarding school and then uh, when her parents dies, it's cast into a more unfortunate situation. So it's sort of a more modern fairy tale wrapped in the colonialism of India. It doesn't really get into the fact that India is being colonized. It's just a thing that's currently happening because this is British literature. And lastly, Peter Pan and Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens by J.M. Barry, which I think I read the first couple chapters of and then I just got deeply and inconsolably sad. I don't think it was the book's fault, it's just the thing that happened, but it is a beautiful edition. I have two copies of The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Uh, this was one of my favorite books that I read in high school, so much so because I wasn't actually forced to read it. It's just the thing that I thought sounded cool. And we have Ernest Hemingway's A Farewell to Arms, A Sound and Fury by William Faulkner. This is the Norton Critical Edition, which means it has the story. 
And then in the back it has a uh, literary criticism and people writing about the story, which I'm always really excited about. And then we have some Dickens. We have Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens, this huge thing, and Hard Times by Charles Dickens. Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift, which is sort of a satirical thing. Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. This is like the perfect short book. I think it's only like 100 pages. If people say they don't like classics because they're too long, give them this book. Uh, then we have the entire Sophocles trilogy, Oedipus the King, Oedipus of Colonus, and Antigone, which um, I really loved performing in. I had the role of Antigone in my high school literature class because he made us act out all of the plays that we read. 1984 by George Orwell, a book that I did not finish on purpose. I found it disgusting and didn't like having to be the subject of gross misogyny the entire time. I did however get this from the Operating Library at the last Granger Leadership Conference I attended, so I am hoping to return it to them. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. This book was originally owned by my older sister when she was studying it in school. Um, my sister's about 10 years older than me, so this book is probably 20-ish years old now. A Separate Piece by John Knowles, which takes place in World War II at a rich boarding school that is all male. Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. I bought this used and it is a um, well-loved copy. And a tiny edition of Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I am hoping to get a nicer edition of this from the same collection that I got the Pride and Prejudice in. And finally, there is some spillover on the classic shelves for uh, books that didn't really have their own place. White Teeth by Zadie Smith. City of Masks and City of Flowers, the first two books in a series that I read when I was in like seventh grade and absolutely fell in love with and I could never find again until like last year. I'm very excited about reading these. And Oh the Places You'll Go, which was a graduation present to me when I finished high school from one of my very best friends. Let me know what your favorite classic book is down in the comments and if you want to see more from me please subscribe, watch another video of mine, or support me on Patreon. And hey, I love you.